Hello, I'm Luke Hatfield, joined by Joe Massey. Uh, we're here at the Swansea.com stadium. Uh, Joe, got to get the sponsorship in there. Um, West Brom lost 2-1. It all started so well. Um, we knew it was going to be a clash of styles, but is it fair to say that possession football won the day today? Uh, absolutely, um, absolutely. Possession based football won the day today. And it's a disappointing night. It's a really, really, really disappointing night, actually, um, from an Alvin perspective, because Look, in terms of, it was a clash of cultures. We knew, look, we've talked about this a lot. Everyone knows the situation, really. But under Russell Martin, Swansea are very much a possession-based team. They basically play out at every opportunity, really, from the keeper into, mm. into Matt Grimes in central midfield, keeps dropping in for the ball. They switch it a lot, which is kind of their long ball, but it's only ever out wide. They, they keep it on the deck, they move it through the thirds. And... <clears throat> Albion are tenacious, they're aggressive, they counter-press, they gagan press if you like. They have got so much energy and it felt like Swansea were the perfect team for them really mm. in many, many ways. And look, Swansea played really well tonight, and, but they were 17th from the table when we arrived here. They're 14th now. Yeah. They're not flying. Look, Russell Martin's coming, he's got to take, he's going to take time of course to get his ideas across. He, I mean, I think he joined the day before the season started, so he does deserve a lot of credit. But <clears throat> you felt like this would be a game that would really suit Albion's style of play. And the truth is, it was just a really average performance, mm -hmm. um, it has to be said. I thought the first half, so it's a flying start from Albion, and you think this is what's going to happen for the rest of the game. So basically, Swansea overplayed mm -hmm. in the first 52 seconds. That I, think, I mean, I can handle about three occasions they could have played the ball out. I mean, they yeah. lost the ball by, this, by a pass that was, I can only describe it as a misplaced drag back. Someone mm. tried to be really clever playing the, a pass that was never really on. It's just a pass that you don't really see ever happen 25, 30 yards from goal. No. Um, but Swansea are going to do it. They're going to play at every opportunity. Um, look, Jake Livermore was there. Of course, he was. Albion aggressive. Win it high up the pitch. Livermore to Phillips to Robinson, cross into the box. Colin Grant can't miss, really. No, tap, in. Um, tap in for his fifth goal in as many games. 52 seconds on the clock, and you're just thinking, this is what's going to happen throughout this game, and what a start. And Albion this season, when they scored early, mm. have been so good. Um, saw it at Cardiff, didn't we, just in Wales a couple of weeks ago, really. Yeah. Colin Grant, I mean, it, brilliant strike. And, but you just... It didn't happen from that stage. You've got to say, I think Albion were the better team in the first half yeah. overall. Um, Jake Livermore has, has a decent chance. Matt Phillips had never sort of entered the box and sort of seen the keeper make a save. But really, there was nothing in it in the first half. Mm. It was a very, very even half bar that goal. I think Swansea ended the first half with 72% possession, but they did nothing with it. Mm. They really didn't test Albion any way, really. Defensively, Albion were very secure. Second half, it was a completely different story. Um, I'm rambling on. I appreciate that. I am no, rambling no, no, on. Don't but, worry. but Swansea were getting annoyed because they kept switching the ball, mm. um, and they, every time they switched, they get kept being get caught offside. And I literally tweeted minutes before the goal. They were tight calls, and mm. Russell Martin and his bench were going mad because they felt they were onside. They kept getting given offside, but one of those was going to come for, go, mm. was going to fall for them. You could see it coming, you really could. And look, they scored Joel Piore, I think his name is, Dutch striker, £1 million signing from PSV mm. in the summer. I think he scored his seventh league goal tonight in 12 games. I mean, what a start to English football yeah. he's made. Absolutely brilliant. And that goal, Swansea were the better team before that goal mm. in the second half, but after it, they were much better. Yeah. The much better team. And they, they, in the end, they, they've won the game through what was a brilliant individual goal from Jamie Patterson, former Walsall player as well, mm -hmm. Russell Martin, former Walsall coach. But it's all come from a Darnell Furlong mistake. And, yeah. and look, Livermore's played the ball out wide. It's an awful touch from Darnell Furlong. He hasn't had a great night, if we're being honest. No, he's, he's been, because he's just a top lad. He's come out tonight, spoke to the press, admitted his mistake. Mm. But that's allowed Jamie Patterson to get the ball, enter the box, score with a, a really good goal in mm. terms of from, that, from the moment Furlong lost the ball. But... Swansea deserved it, yeah. um, if we're being honest. The questions Albion asked in the second half were non-existent. They've had mm. one effort, really, from, from Matt Phillips, which has hit the bar, but he's let fly from 25 yards. It's yeah, come he, from nothing, hasn't it? It's come from nothing. You can't expect him to score from 25 yards. The keeper's tipped it onto the bar. It's a great strike, obviously, but that's not, that's not a chance. Mm. Um, they've just not carved Swansea open at all. Um, and I think the forward players tonight... Look, there's, you can't... At the end of the day, you've got to supply ammunition for forward players haven't you you've got to, mm. you've got to bring them into the game but none of them have done it a lot and it's just been a very 
It's flat. It was flat. Mm. The worrying thing, Joe, is we've seen these kind of performances from Albion against teams who have, you know, admittedly come to frustrate them. They've gone to the Hawthorns or Albion have gone away and the other team have said, we're not going to let you press, we're going to frustrate you. And Albion have put in a, a performance which is fairly average. This is the first time we've seen it against a team where, as you said, the style of play suited Albion today. The style of play that Russell Martin and Swansea play suited Albion. And they've been, they've, they've been quite comfortably beaten, I think, in the end, and over that second half anyway, in particular. Mm, it's, it's, it, that is the thing. I feel like, at the end of the day, in these games, we've seen it so many times, teams have come to the Hawthorne, sat back, five giants at the back, Millwall, Blues, Derby, whoever. Mm. And look, it's up to Albion to break those teams down, have the quality to break them down, of course it is, but you have to sort of go, OK, look, there's, it is frustrating that they've come and played that way. You can yeah. sort of see why the games have followed the pattern of which they, they followed. Tonight, you're right. I feel like it's on Albion mm. tonight why they haven't got more from the game. In those first sort of five, six, five games of the season, they were so high, weren't they? Yeah. So high up the pitch. They were forcing teams deep into their own half, and that wasn't there tonight. No. Um, it just wasn't there at all. The, yeah, the, the, the aggression. They were tenacious, but they weren't really aggressive. I know that probably doesn't make sense, but they didn't implement the plan the way they should have. There's no mm. doubt about it, and that is, on, that is on Albion tonight. They just weren't good enough, really. Mm. They weren't good enough at what they want to do. Yeah. I believe that, they weren't, yeah. Yeah, and you know we, we've got to mention that you know they're without some key players. Alex Moa wasn't even in the squad. Uh, neither was Grady D in Ghana. And you looked at that bench midway through that second half, and you were wondering how are they going to change it because Hugo came on, didn't offer very much for me at all. Once again, and there was no real way of changing it in terms of, especially those forward three players. Because I thought when Snodgrass came on, it's like. You kind of wanted to see him in a, a bit more an advanced position for me, anyway. That's where he can really impact the game. Obviously, you know, Ishmael sees him as a midfielder. Uh, we saw Reach come on, but we we didn't see you know nearly enough from him. Although he wasn't given too much time, it was a little bit worrying. Yeah, the the the, the lack of creativity is. It, there's, Albion have always created chances this season. That, like their xG has been very very high, even when they've not scored goals. Mm. The x if you look if you if you base the result on xG, they would win a lot of the games they drew comfortably. The last couple of games, it feels like that's the, the, they haven't created the same chances at mm. all. And the front players just doesn't yeah, it's just not there's, there's a there's a lack of spark at the minute from them. Um, there really is. I thought Malumbi did well coming into the team. I thought he was he, no one's had a great night tonight. No. But he was. He, he was a 6 out of 10 when there's, when there's a lot of players who are below that yeah. um, but the forward players in particular it's difficult when, when you see three forward players it wasn't three forward players that struggled tonight it was four because mm. Hugel came on as well and when you see four struggle you wonder is, is that does something else need to change really is it a result of the they system yeah they can't all have got out of bed the wrong, on the wrong side can they do yeah. they need something a little bit different so I'd like you I'd like to see Snodgrass a little bit further forward um, but yeah yeah disappointing night and I think the Blues, I think, I think it's fair to say that after the Blues game, obviously look, it was a big win. Mm. They got the job done, they got themselves over a line against the Blues side that came to frustrate. But I think Ishmael would have come away from that game thinking they needed to create a bit more. It was only Carl and Grant's goal and a Carl Bartley header which came after that goal they really created against Blues. Yeah. Tonight, it's a goal and a, a decent chance for Livermore really in the first half and a, and a 30 yard pile driver from Phillips. Other than that, they've created so little and that's what they need to rediscover going forward because look Bristol City are going to come and do what everyone else has done yeah, at the Hawthorns yeah. aren't they they're going to come and try and frustrate and now we need to find a little bit of spark um, a little bit of creativity could Grady Dean Garner be the answer potentially um, we think he should be fit for the weekend but something's not clicking up there at the minute um, Grant's got his goals his fifth goal in as many games today but it's just not something up there's not right and they're going to have to do about Jake Livermore as well and they are going to have to do about Jake Livermore of course yeah fifth booking today um just going back to the striker thing, it absolutely feels like we're crying out for a centre forward, and and like a we said it on the podcast, it feels like we're crying out for Daryl DK, yeah. someone of that ilk, someone who did what he did for Barnsley last season, obviously an Ishmael system. I can't imagine the difference that would make to this team at this mm. moment in time. We need someone like that, and then you. And then you'd imagine if we had someone like that, then everyone else around them would come to life. Callum yeah. Robinson's too good a player to be as quiet as he has tonight and against Blues and Grady and. Flips. Yeah, it feels like we need that central striker to me, but yeah, something's got something. They've got to find a bit more spark on, against Bristol City, and like you said, they'll have to do it about Jake Livermore because he'll be suspended. There we go. More spark needed from Albion. Uh, you know where to go for all your post-match news. Expressingstar.com.